copra meal. Yes. Right. <laughs> so, so if you can ex explain to folks what copra meal is. Yes. Well, well, copra meal is a coconut uh, meal, and it is the byproduct of uh, co uh, coconut oil productions. Very similar to, I guess, soybean meal in in a way, because soybean meal is also a byproduct of soybean oil production. Coconut oil is the primary uh, fat source here. Uh, well, I would guess uh, in the ASEAN region, region, that would be the Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia. Uh, so that's why we have a lot of uh, uh, coconut oil and uh, uh, because we have a lot of palm trees, <laughs> coconut trees. Mm -hmm. um, well, the challenge with co copra meal is it's very high in, um, in uh, fiber. Uh, and the type of fiber that's present in, in copra meal is very different from other byproducts because it's very high in, uh, um, in non-starch polysaccharides, particularly uh, mannans and galactomannans, which, is, uh, which are soluble fibers and much more difficult to deal with. Uh, the same is true for palm kernel products. So also in this region, we have a lot of palm oil uh, byproducts. Um, so like palm, palm, uh, palm kernel meal. And its composition is very similar with, uh, with copper meal. It's also high in, uh, very high in fiber. And uh, I think one of the problems also with these ingredients is uh, it has a very poor amino acid balance. It does contain protein about uh, palm kernel product is about, about 15% and the uh, copra meal is about 21%. Uh, protein. So in a way, that's, uh, that may be, uh, those can be used as a, an alternative uh, for soybean meal, but the quality of uh, the protein quality of these byproducts are very poor. Uh, it's very high in arginine. Uh, so the arginine lysine ratios of these ingredients, uh, in a way, affects uh, uh, lysine utilization. And because they are heat processed, that further reduces uh, uh, lysine digestibility in these ingredients. That's why it's, these are very difficult ingredients to use um, uh, in the feed. Uh, but with a little help, uh, like I said, as long as we have a way to mitigate the, the negative effects of its composition, then we can improve the utilization of these ingredients. So that can be through uh, properly assessing the energy value as well as the amino acid digestibility values that we could get uh, from these ingredients. And we've done a lot of work that we were able to accomplish that. So copra meal is, uh, I think, uh, before, for example, uh, we don't normally use this ingredient in nursery diets, uh, but with uh, better uh, matrix values and nutrient loading values, uh, you, we can actually use it as much as 15% in the diet without negatively affecting performance. Wow. And I think that's another thing. You know, what we've seen in the work that we've done is I think we are underestimating the value of piglets, particularly in how they utilize fiber. Uh, because we've seen it with copra meal. We've seen it with, the, we've seen it with palm kernel products. We've seen it with wheat middlings. We've seen it in rice bran. Uh, uh, we often stay away from these ingredients for in putting together our nursery diets. But as long as we, we do a very good job of assessing the value of these ingredients, we can successfully include them in, in these diets without negatively affecting performance. So that could be a source of, uh, uh, that could be a way to reduce uh, our cost. 